You're listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, RJD. Smackdown and Rampage Review. You already know what's coming to you. I'm not going to lie. Smackdown sucked. Nope. You activated my trap card. So I don't, I don't know. We know we're not doing much on that. But Rampage was good. So let's talk about it. But before we do, check out my socials. That's right, that's right. Follow me, RJD, RJD underscore 199 on Instagram, RJ699 on Twitter, RJD199 on Snapchat, and most importantly, follow What's The Wrestling on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Follow What The Wrestling on Spotify and Anchor. Follow What The Wrestling because you want to follow What The Wrestling. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Tis I, RJD here. Welcome to What the Wrestling. This is the podcast where we talk about all things wrestling. I am your host, RJD. About 10 pounds, too goddamn heavy. Holy crap. Surprise, motherfucker. I am fat. I need to lose some weight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I feel, uh, if you ever seen The Crow... I feel like a little fucking worm on a big fucking hook. <laughs> Man, I just... Oof, I need to lose some weight. Like, you ever just gain... Wait, I got I to talk about this, guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got to talk to y'all. I got to talk to y'all. I love y'all. You ever just gain 10 pounds and then just be like... You just feel it in your soul, like your head, your back, your knees... Your calves, you just feel it all over you. That's how I feel. I didn't gain 10 pounds and I feel like dog shit. Jesus Christ. So, we will be actively, actively working to get this weight rectified. 10 pounds is, nah, it's not that big of a hurdle, but yeah. It starts today. You activated my trap card. Right after this, I'm about to go hit. I'm about to go do some calisthenics and then hit two miles on the track because, yeah, it's about that time. But before that, let's talk about SmackDown. But before that, let's talk about hitting the like button. Like the goddamn video, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, What The Wrestling, on all my social media platforms. As always, the descriptions will be in the end of the video like they were in the beginning of the video in case you missed it and you don't want to hit rewind listen to this wait to the end for my youtube watchers and facebook watchers and you will catch it once more if you're listening to this on audio rewind it god damn it but anyway we are on the road to 100 next week we doing way more live streams so check out for that i told y'all in previous videos this week that we are going to condense raw and nxt we are going to condense 
SmackDown and Rampage. And we will focus more on news and live streams throughout the week. We're going to try that out for a week or two. See how it looks. See how you guys take to it. And then we will roll out moving forward. So, follow your boy. Moving on. Let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown sucked. Um, there was not a lot of... Uh, we're going to run through this quick. Because SmackDown was fucking terrible. There was not a lot of wrestling on SmackDown. There was a lot of video packages. Stop the show. Stop the show. Your tribal chief, Roman Reigns. His entrance is too goddamn long. We got entrances into a video package, into an entrance, into a video package, into two minutes of talking. Too, too much. Too much. I know Roman has the lighter schedule now. Good for him. He's earned it. But, and I know they have a lot of injuries. And they'll be back soon. But holy hell. There was not a lot of wrestling on this show. SmackDown opened with the bloodline. Uh, the Universal Undisputed Champion. Mr. Tribal Chief himself, Roman Reigns. Talked about last man standing match with Brock Lesnar. Stop the show. Stop the show. The fact that this match is happening again and it's supposed to be the last time ever until they need Brock back for something, it sucks, okay? Stop it. Get some help. We've seen this shit nine times. We don't need to see it again. Roman and Brock, two great competitors, two awesome wrestlers. We've seen this too many times. Not even an adequate story behind it. It's just throwing it together just because you need to throw it together. It sucks. We have Paul Heyman on the track, as always. Paul Heyman argued that Lesnar is at his most dangerous when he's backed into a corner. Heyman then insisted Roman pull out all the stops to put Lesnar down for good. And then Theory, with the Money in the Bank briefcase, interrupted Reigns. And he did a lap, bef he did a lap around the ring before taking off. Get the fuck out of here! Nope. Hell no. Hell no. Whack. Trash. Basuda. Garbage. Who wrote this? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? Who wrote this? He came down, did a lap, and then they and then he left. Anyway, that was trash. Um, that was trash, bro. I, I I don't know. I like Austin Theory. I think he's got crazy upside. But the problem here with this Roman Reigns stuff. Why is my mouse acting crazy? The problem here with this Roman Reigns stuff is that he done ran through everybody already. He done ran through everybody and then... Soon as they come up against like Roman, he's like the ultimate boss. It's like you are dead. <laughs> like he done beat everybody. So I understand that. And Roman is a big star, made everybody better, but there's nobody left. And then you think you're getting The Rock next year for him to put The Rock over, well, for The Rock to put him over? Not happening. Stupid. Especially with all this Vince McMahon stuff going on, you're lucky to even get John Cena to come back and commit. Stupid. Because there's a lot of stuff going on with Vince, and we're going to talk about that more again tomorrow. But And it's not good. You already saw my video about how he $12 million in payoffs that he's had, and one of which is bad. And listen, The Rock might want to keep his distance from this. The Rock don't need the money. He would just do it for the love. For the love of his cousin, for the love of the fans, for, for, for the love of Vince. He don't need the bread. So why would he come back with all of this stuff going on with Vince and all of this uncertainty in WWE? Why would he come back? So your best bet is Cody right now, which is great. Cody probably, hopefully, wins the Royal Rumble. And then after that, goes on, beats Roman next year. But how are you getting there? How are you going to get to that? See, this is what I'm saying. This, they are in trouble. <laughs> but it seems... 
It seems like they're always in trouble, but I don't know. We're going to have to see what happens. We had Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus, but Sheamus fake coughed and said he has the Rona. Who's writing this? That was whack. So instead of fighting him, he fought Butch and beat Butch. Great. This was supposed to be a number one contenders match, and it got swapped out for a short squash match. So outside of Sheamus being hurt, I don't know why they didn't just have the match. So Sheamus, was, Sheamus or Drew wanted to have a number one contenders match to see who's fighting Roman and Cardiff. But the problem is, Drew McIntyre already said he was doing that. So, the, the, pop, the plot holes are just ridiculous. Moving on. What else do we have on the show? We had the Viking Raiders beat Jinder Mahal and Shankly. And then afterwards, Xavier Woods and Kofi came out to make the save, and then they got their asses kicked. You stupid. That's fine. Uh, I like... The Viking Raiders, finally, they'll be using them properly like they will use the NXT. Hopefully, that's where we're going. We had Walter, a.k.a. Gunther, and his associate, Ludwig Kaiser, um, defend his Intercon, uh, refused to defend his Intercontinental Championship. Uh, they described uh, any champion who would fight a mystery opponent is foolish. Shinsuke Nakamura... Who then came in and Shinsuke fought Kaiser after he beat Kaiser in a short little match. Uh, Walter chopped the holy hell out of Kaiser. Not to break up the team, but to just show how irritated he was that the ring Shadaral, his representative, got beat. So, cool with that. Uh, Liv Morgan came out and she celebrated. She was interrupted by Natalia and Ronda. Ronda came out and wasn't mad. Uh, she said, listen, you beat me. I'm not mad. It's all good. And this culminated in and, and Natalia. Props to her, but they ain't not giving her much to work with. Natalia came out and fought Ronda. And Ronda was in street clothes. And she squashed Natalia real, real quick. So, at the end of the day, it was like, good celebration. Still a quick squ still a quick squash. Stupid. Then we had Max Dupois. <laughs> Max Dupree unveiled the 2022 tennis male model maximum male models collection with Marseille and Mansour. I said Marseille and Mansour. They showed off their uh Hoochie Daddy shorts, as the ladies would say, the tennis collection. And that was all she wrote with that. Uh, don't know where this is going with the male, with the maximum male models. I would like to like it, but it needs to be going somewhere. And right now, you stupid. Not really looking like it's going anywhere. Lacey Evans was supposed to tag with Aaliyah, but she punched her out, and they got mad at the crowd for not uh, treating her right. So she wanted some respect. respect Put some respect on her name. Uh, so she got mad at the crowd. It happens. The Usos beat Los Lotarios. If I had hair, I'd be flicking it back like this. They beat Los Lotarios, the Spanish pretty boys. And yeah, that was it. 1D, real quick match. Uh, one, two, three. The Usos then continue to maintain that they beat <coughs> that they beat the excuse me that they beat the Street Profits clean. Even though Montez Ford's shoulder was clearly up, they rightfully blamed the referee for the error because it was the ref's fault. Uh, Braxton told Jimmy and Jay that the special guest referee is being discussed for their rematch, and it's happening at SummerSlam. Nope. I mean, that's pretty good. I hit the no button because we've seen this match a hundred million times. So how are we getting from here to SummerSlam without seeing this variation of four people fight again? The next time these people fight, I want to see them fight at SummerSlam. We've seen them fight a million times already. So, moving on. 
Liv Morgan versus Natalia is headed down for next week. SmackDown, uh, it's to receive a SmackDown Women's Title ch- opportunity because the best way in WWE to get a title shot is to beat the champion already once. Get the fuck out of here! Moving on. That was just SmackDown. SmackDown, honestly, was not good at all. Uh, this show was not good. They didn't have a lot of wrestling. They had a lot of promo packages, a lot of talking. It, it just, they got to do better. They got to do better. Moving on. Rampage. We had Eddie Kingston versus Konosuke Takeshita. Uh, Konosuke is awesome. Love that guy. Him just fighting, fighting back. This match was a lot of fun. We got to see Eddie Kingston do some technical stuff. And okay, for all the people who say, oh, Eddie Kingston's not that good. He's just a good talker. He's not that good in the ring. He's not technical. Eddie Kingston is a very good, underrated technical wrestler. He can do it when he wants to do it. And these two had a fiery brawl ending with Eddie Kingston doing about three or four back chop fists to Kenosuke, and he picked up the win. But Kenosuke had the crowd behind him. Kenosuke is going to be a big, big star. The crowd loves this guy. And I had no idea who he was, but... Now, knowing who he is, the crowd loves Kenosuke. They really do. And they're going to get behind them Stop for the it. most part. Get some help. They don't need any help with Kenosuke. <laughs> but this was a fun opener. Eddie Kingston and Kenosuke went at it. It was good to see these two battle, battle it out. Good to see Eddie Kingston uh, back on TV. Good to see Kenosuke earning his stripes and becoming the next AEW breakout star. Positives all around. Perfect. Next, we had the Gates of Agony versus Lee Mior, Mo, Lee Mior, Mior, you hear? Lee Majority. Stupid. Versus Lee Moriarty and Jonathan Gresham, the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. This was good. Lee Moriarty got his ass kicked. So, the whole story of this match was Lee Moriarty fighting back to a hot tag. He fighting back for the hot tag, fighting back to the hot tag, fighting back to the hot tag, finally gets the hot tag, but oh no, Jonathan Gresham turns heel, and he joins Tully Blanchard and leaves his ring partner out there to get killed, he loses, it's essentially a handicap match after this, and the gates of agony get the win behind Tully Blanchard's swerve of signing Jonathan Gresham, this was great, so... This was the Ring of Honor show after this, which I'm fine with. I love Ring of Honor. I think I, I'm happy that they're getting back on uh, that they're back on pay per view. I hope they do eventually get back on TV, and I hope you see a lot of guys over there, AEW guys included. I think it's gonna be great. So I love this. This was a good match, good stuff, good swerve. Because I didn't see Gresham going heel, but he did. All more power to it. We also had a Kingston promo, and he said, I want to taste your blood. You made me a liar. And you know what? You know what? All Every drop of blood is for all your sins. And this last drop will be for touching my ruby. Something like that. Uh, give Eddie Kingston a world title run, please. Eddie Kingston is one of the best on that mic. He makes you feel things whenever he talks. And you don't know what's real and what's not. He is literally a savage. And he can have great matches. Not like the brother can't wrestle. Eddie Kingston, I'm glad he is getting his just due. Everything positive that comes to that man in his life, he deserves it. Uh, On the professional side, because he's been good for a long time. And listen, okay, he has a a beer belly. Who gives a shit? He's fucking awesome. Eddie Kingston, even if he has two title defenses or from one pay-per-view and he loses it to the next pay-per-view and in between he has one title defense, that brother needs the AEW title just just one. One title ring. Just one. Please. I'm pushing for it. Serena Dean by Mercedes Martinez versus Kayla Sparks and Christina Marie. This is a glorified squash. Serena Dean and Mercedes win. The end came when Mercedes, Serena and Mercedes were trying to show each other up because Serena D was going for the Ring of Honor Women's World title. 
So Serena Deeb gets the win. Uh, no, Mercedes got the win. No, Serena Deeb got the win, tapping her out. She tagged herself in. She was continuing to beat down after the bell sounded. But Mercedes Martinez pulled her off of the young girl. And Serena Deeb said, okay. And then she promptly whacked her ass with the belt. Get out of your, get out of your mind, you filthy perverts. That's not what I meant. <laughs> she clotheslined her and left her laying because she's like, I'm better than you. I'm coming for that women's title. And there ain't a damn thing you can do about it. So I love Serena Deeb. She is fantastic. Woman of a thousand holes. Mercedes Martinez is good. Doesn't get the amount of love that I think she deserves. But she's very good. And these two should have a very good match. So good on them. Then we had the orange one. Orange Cassidy versus Tony Nese. Because for the right to sign the petition to get swerve out of AEW. Orange Cassidy came down with Dan Housen. Dan Housen is great. He's good wherever he goes. So shout out to Dan Housen. The first thing I would say is Damn son, where'd you find this? This was a good match. The second thing I would say is they need to do something with Tony Nice. Tony Nice is better than just putting people over. I know he wrestles on dark elevation. He's 12 and 5. Great. But Tony Nice is really good. And he needs they need to give him something. He needs to go for the TNT title. They need to put him in the mix. Give him a good story. Something. Tony Nice is too good to just be putting people over. They need to do something with him. The next thing I, I learned. Not the cow. We love Orange Cassidy, man. <laughs> I love that new theme music. It is immaculate. Uh, we had a we had interference by Smart Mark Sterling, and at the end, the end sequence was great because we had Sterling made sure was given shots behind the ref's back. Dan Housen ended up chasing him off at the end, but not before cursing Tony Nice. So he cursed. Uh, who did he curse? I think he cursed Tony Nice. And after that, Orange Cassidy hit a huge orange punch for the win. There was a lot of near falls. I got something in my eye. There's another near. There was a lot of near falls in this match. And that was great. Because even a couple of times, they had me thinking Tony Nice was going to win. Even though I fully expected him to lose. Tony Nice is really good. Orange Cassidy is really good. Like I said in my TikTok video, what the wrestling. Stop saying Orange Cassidy can't wrestle because if you do, Stop the cow. Uh, that's bull crap. That's bull jive, as Shannon Sharp would say. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Uncle Shannon. But a lot of shots fired at Orange Cassidy recently. Uh, Tony Nice needs to be given something to get his teeth into. And other than that, this was a very very solid episode of Rampage. That Eddie Kingston promo gave me chills. That brother is on point, man. That brother's on point. So, with that being said, SmackDown sucked. Rampage was great. But I am out of here. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day. But I had to bring this to you. Here come my socials one more time. So, with that being said, I am out. Everybody be safe and enjoy the day. Don't be stupid. Enjoy yourself and just... And be safe out there. I am out. Peace. Down the Monko, Monko.